Greetings nerdy list aficionados and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. Today we're looking at when superhero friendship goes wrong. As a hero, at some point you end up making friends with other members of the superhero community. And well, sometimes you have to kill them. Some of these heroes turned evil, some did it after being manipulated, and one because he was asked to. Ooh, are you intrigued? Now you need to know. I'm Sasha and these are the top 10 superheroes who killed their friends. Let's get started. Number 10. Hal Jordan kills the entire Green Lantern Corps. That's right, it's Hal Jordan as Parallax time. In the 90s, after the destruction of Coast City during the reign of the Superman arc, Hal Jordan was grief stricken, and so were his white Reed Richards hair streaks, which he had for a while. He would go mad and try to use his ring to recreate Coast City, and eventually go full supervillain using the name Parallax. In the process of getting all the rings, he would end up killing the Corps and Sinestro. The Green Lantern Corps were his friends, and pre his face heel turn, or rather the reveal that he was a tyrant, Sinestro had been his mentor and teacher as well. Hal snapped his neck. All of this was because in this time period, the idea was that the Green Lantern mythos had grown too large and that they needed to rein it back in. So we would have one Green Lantern for a while after this, Kyle Rayner. And Hal's legacy would be sullied, despite kinda redeeming himself dying in the sun. Later, Hal and the Corps would be brought back to life, and we would pull the classic, it wasn't his fault. He was possessed. It fed on his fears and made him kill his friends. No one could resist it. Look, it got Superman. In fact, he was better than most people because he held it off for longer. Sure, Jan. The man killed all of his friends because he was sad. You can retcon it away, but I was there, Gandalf. Number nine, Booster Gold, the gift. Booster Gold has the ability to time travel, and with that ability comes the potential to radically alter the timeline and erase people from existence, or just create scenarios where they end up dying. Don't change timelines. This has been a PSA. Leave them alone. So in the Tom King story arc, The Gift, leading up to the fake out that cat wedding, Booster decided to get Bruce a present, what every little boy wants, for his parents not to have been murdered in front of his eyes. However, this resulted in some ripple effects throughout the timeline. People erased from existence, and if Hal makes it one more week after fight clubbing himself, I would be very shocked. He beat himself up because he could. Fight Club. Bruce actually destroys Skeets, and Skeets, okay, it sounds sad, but that's Booster's best friend. He got his best friend killed. Yes, we can rebuild him, they have the technology, but still, Booster, did you not learn from Ted Kord? And all of that debacle? Oh wait, that got retcon, so nobody learned anything. Oh, so I know Skeet is slang for something else, but we're all gonna pretend it's not. Number eight, Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe. So this is a mini series from 2012 and presents one of those scenarios we just need to go with, namely that Deadpool could kill the entire Marvel Universe. Some points for his meta knowledge, but still. So how did this happen? Well, Wade was committed to Ravencroft Institute, where a doctor would cure him of his inner voices. Unfortunately, the asylum had been infiltrated by the Psycho Man, who was brainwashing patients to do his bidding. However, when it came to Deadpool, he only succeeded in making his voices tell him to kill everyone. Deadpool had friends in the Marvel Universe, you know what happened? Dead. Murdered in elaborate ways. And because it's Deadpool, he can even exceed the reach of just his own universe. Early era Deadpool was a different beast than the one most people know today. Number 7. Captain America and Black Widow Now the Captain America we're talking about is Hydra Cap, but never forget, Hydra Cap was real Cap. Because the timeline was altered, and the Cap they went and got was from the unaltered timeline. But he was brought to this new status quo one where all the people in it are from that one. Don't let them erase that. We know what happened. Anyway, Steve had been a sleeper agent for years, biding his time, and when he was unveiled, he went hard. Hail Hydra! And that involved killing Natasha, Black Widow, who had been his friend for years, albeit this was an accident. He was actually fighting Spider-Man Miles Morales, but Natasha inserted herself in between them to stop the killing blow, which instead landed on, guess what part? Her stomach? No, her neck snapping it. It's the only way to go. So this wasn't intentional. He didn't want to kill her, but you know what? Friend dead. Thanks a lot, Hydra Cap. Take the time it was released out of it. Does the story read better now for you, or just conceptually will it never be for you? Number 6. Deadpool Kills Spider-Man Spider-Man and Deadpool had a team-up comic, Spider-Man slash Deadpool, and the slash was intentional. It was a cue for shippers of Spidey Pool to pick the book up. The book pandered hard. There was even a villainess who called them her daddies. The first run was written by Joe Kelly, the author of the Deadpool run that made him into a popular character, largely because at the time he was a throwaway character. So in this run, Deadpool is teaming up with Spider-Man and even taking 
taking him to meet his daughter, showing him his hangout pad, you know, friend things. But he also hates Peter Parker, as Parker was pulling a whole Tony Stark at the time. Like, oh, I know Spider-Man, he's my bodyguard. So Deadpool was tricked into believing that Peter was part of some clandestine dealings, and so went to his apartment and shot him point blank in the head. Now, he didn't know he was killing his would-be bestie, but he did it anyway. He would go to bring Peter back to life though, still not knowing he was Spider-Man. Number five. Spider-Man kills Deadpool. That's right, cause turnaround is fair play. Peter also killed Wade in this book. After his whole I was dead thing, One More Day reared its ugly head again. One More Day was the storyline wherein Peter and Mary Jane's marriage was dissolved and his identity was reset post that reveal in Civil War, the first Civil War, so Civil War I. And also just cause the writing staff hated his marriage and Mary Jane in general. Who did she think she was? Being a character. Okay, hate is a strong word, more like we're not interested in writing. There we go. So after being dead, Peter began to have an inkling that there was something missing in his life. Something wasn't quite right, and he would become a darker character because of it, even contemplating killing. Deadpool, who was horrified at the path his friend was headed down, tried to show him that he was turning into something that wasn't, well, the best, not very heroic. And then in a fit of rage, he stabbed Deadpool through the chest, and also did a little bit of throat slicing that killed Deadpool. Of course, Deadpool's healing factor allowed him to come back to life, but that is not cool. You don't kill people who are just looking out for you, even if they will just get better in a few hours. Number four, Dr. Manhattan kills Rorschach. Now, some of you may be saying, were Dr. Manhattan and Rorschach friends? And well, as much as Dr. Manhattan could be friends with anybody at that point. In a way, him killing him demonstrated that. Also, if you take into account the extended canon, which I know for some people is blasphemy, they don't exist, they're not real, they're apocrypha, there was a timeline there though where they were partnered together, and not Dr. Manhattan and Laurie. So at the climax of The Watchmen, spoilers for a comic from the 80s, it was revealed that Ozymandias had set a plan in motion, a plan that spanned years to engineer a threat that would unify the people of Earth against a common enemy, hence averting nuclear Armageddon and pushing back the Doomsday Clock. All of the characters in Watchmen are meant to represent different philosophical views points when it comes to crime fighting. So Rorschach has a very rigid view of truth, and as a result, viewed the idea of keeping what Ozymandias had done, which had resulted in the deaths of millions, a secret, abhorrent. And he would have had to tell. It was not a viewpoint shared by the others, or for those who felt that way, they weren't willing to act on it, instead burying their convictions. Rorschach knew he couldn't live with the secret, so when Dr. Manhattan followed him out into the snow, cause Adrian had a whole fortress of solitude going on, he told him to do it, to kill him. And so Dr. Dr. Manhattan does. It's a really powerful moment. One of the Watchmen's strengths is its ambiguity and nuance, how it allows the reader to draw their own conclusions. A choice that whether you enjoy any spin-offs or not is absent in most of them. Number three, Wolverine and Old Man Logan. Old Man Logan is a now famous alternate universe storyline whose very premise for the protagonist, Logan, rests on him killing his friends. It's a big reveal, so spoilers. Wolverine is tricked by Mysterio into murdering all of the X-Men, which requires the reader to believe that this is something he could do even Storm. The idea here is that they hesitated because he was a friend. But in a world where people get possessed and body swapping happens all the time, I have a hard time believing they wouldn't know how to put a teammate down hard, but still alive. But maybe that's just the Batman in me talking. After so brutally killing his friends and surrogate family, Wolverine vowed to never unsheathe his claws again, which obviously he did, hence old man Logan. But it was years later, he kept that promise for a decent amount of time. Number two, Scarlet Witch, no more mutants. So Scarlet Witch, in a bout of instability, nearly eliminated the entire mutant race, except for people's faves, because we needed them to sell books. This was after the House of M storyline, where she had remade reality, after hers had been shattered by the realization that she had been altering it in ways that she hadn't even realized, like her children were are real now, it's complicated. So this would lead to a resetting of the entire Marvel X-Men universe in an attempt to portion it down. But she eliminated some of her friends, and while many would forgive her, not all would. And while it's understandable, she almost committed genocide. Rogue's not over it. And number one, Superman kills Batman. Superman and Batman have an interesting history when it comes to their friendship. They started off as best friends, no question, but it would get more complex over time, with their differences in personality coming into play and resulting in the idea that at the start they would have some conflict, you know, before the whole best friends. However, the canon is that they are good friends, be it instant or hard fought. 
When it comes to killing Batman, Superman has done that more than once. But let's look at one of the more iconic ones, and a recent one. He killed him in the New Order timeline in Nightwing's comics with his heat vision. And this was because he was under the influence of Black Kryptonite. This would result in a dystopian timeline set in motion by Dick Grayson, who would establish a New Order. He also seemingly killed him in Dark Knight's Metal 2 with that famous panel where he punches right through him. But psych, that was Clayface. Why is this above all the mutants? Well, it's because these two are best friends. It's shocking. Friends shouldn't kill friends. Don't do it. They won't appreciate it. I'm Sasha, and thanks so much for watching Top 10 Nerd. Please tell me of any other instances you can think of where superheroes killed their friends, because I want to hear them, because I'm that person. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. And we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.